Hello, my, my Roman name would be Flora, um, and I'm a, a doctor, um, which is unusual, but there were lots of female doctors, not as many as men, but you could have several different career paths. You could be a doctor, you could be a midwife, or you could be a wet nurse, which is a bit like a nurse. Here on this table, massive amounts of equipment. This is some of the types of medical instruments that were available to Roman doctors. Um, most doctors would have quite a selection of these instruments, which are all for amputation and cutting. So you've got an amputation scalpel, an amputation saw for actually sawing through the bone. Um, these are dissectors and, and lancets, which was used for bleeding, because they believed in balancing, so that's why you would sometimes have to bleed somebody. These are cataract needles for eye operations. And then you have your insurance policy, which is you would take a votive offering to the gods to say, please make me better. And you were saying that these were representations of the part of the body that they often, needed the gods' attention. Very often they would show. So if you look at these, you can see this is a set of eyes, but they look quite swollen, so probably someone with conjunctivitis. Um, and you can, by archaeologists looking at the finds from places like Bath and, and other temple areas, they can understand some of the diseases because they actually would make representations of what was wrong with the person. Right. And then there was one particularly gruesome thing you were talking me through over here. This is quite a specialised, this is an uvalu forceps and those would be used, the little wobbly thing at the back of the throat if that becomes infected would swell and you couldn't breathe. So you would use a locking forceps to actually grab hold of it and then you could pull to ex extend the, the stem and then these forceps which are serrated and would actually fit very closely together um, would be heated and then those would be clamped around the stem and held um, in contemporary reports it says for as long as a patient could endure it and then a bit longer so probably wait for your patient to pass out and then wait a few more minutes and then you would cut between the two instruments and hopefully when you release this it had cauterized and they wouldn't actually bleed to death and they weren't only used in the mouth were they the no the other thing that they were used for was hemorrhoids lovely thank you